video diary, day number two in La Longue. It's about two o'clock in the morning, and um, I just woke up from a couple hour nap. I've been completely exhausted today and hit a wall. <laughs> Had a full, long day of rehearsal. And then one of my hosts actually drove me through some of the neighboring communities um, to take the band members back. And I had no idea, no idea what was in store for me there. And it's funny, I was just eating some of my dried fruit that I brought with me and picking through the pieces that I wanted and what I didn't want. And it occurred to me that all of the children that I saw on the street today, the children that had lighted fires all along the dirt roads just to keep warm, huddled together, no more than four or five, six years old, that the grown men and women that I saw in the streets, burning fires, just sitting along the road with their little pot, cooking whatever little scraps they had found on the street to keep their bellies full. Or the little seven-year-old boy that I saw at the market with no shoes on his feet, lined up in a row with other handicapped people who had lost their legs or their arms and whatever body parts they had outstretched to you just to beg for whatever it is that, that you would, would be willing to give. <laughs> that they wouldn't have had a choice in picking through the little nuts and fruits that I just did. And it kills me. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand how something like this can happen. I wanted to take all those little kids home. And they were just so happy to know that, that I was American. And that I wanted to just spend a minute with them. And they're so happy. They're so beautiful. As dirty and, and ashy as they were knowing that they probably hadn't bathed in days. They were so eager just to show me what English they knew and just to tell me their name and show me they could count in English. These little huts they call houses where some of them can't even afford to put a roof overhead. It's just too much money. And the men I see running through the street just to get to work. In the U.S., <laughs> if you didn't have a car or a bus, most of us probably couldn't even be bothered. And many of our poorest class are probably just content to be where they're at. These people run through the streets to get to work, to their menial jobs, cleaning up someone's crap, or picking tobacco, or just maybe getting to their little craft section that they have on the street corner to sell you these amazing, intricately carved pieces that if they were in Barney's or Saks Fifth Avenue, they would go for thousands of dollars when all they want is five bucks. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think the amazing thing is that I'm not interacting with people who are not capable, don't have the intellect or the understanding of what it is to work hard 
and to want something greater. These musicians I've been working with, <laughs> they're on the same level as most of the musicians that I've worked with back home that have worked with the, the Janet Jacksons and the Madonnas and the Beyonce's and all of these artists. They're no different. Amazing, amazing musicians. Amazing, amazing young men. Positive eager to prove themselves grateful for any opportunity that they're given. But they've clearly been put in a position where based on the economic structure here and their limited education, they've been set up to fail. <laughs> How jacked up is that? <laughs> 